great, isn't it? The great and the good in the world of boxing having their say ahead of this uh, massive undisputed heavyweight clash between Tyson Fury and Alexander Usyk over in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Simon's alongside me and Martin O'Neill as we look ahead to it now in the company of legendary boxing commentator Adam Smith. Adam, good afternoon to you. How are you? Nice to Very see you Very well. Ah, it's a voice, Martin, isn't it? Adam Smith's yeah. voice. I just think big time boxing. Big time boxing. That's what I think when Adam Smith speaks. Adam, before we get into this, Tyson Fury has said many things this week. Uh, some of it pretty pretty classy. Some of it maybe not so. Uh, he was quite reserved late yesterday when he spoke. Have a listen. I'm ready. I've got nothing to say apart from I'm ready for a good fight. And if it's tough or easy, either way, I'll be ready. God bless him, and I'll say a prayer for him before we walk out and we both get out of the ring in one piece and go home to our families because that's what it's about. Now then, that is what it's about. What is this all about, Adam? What is about to unfold? Well, it's a wonderful, wonderful fight. Let's put it into perspective. You know, the first time in a quarter of a century that the undisputed belts are on the line at heavyweights in the blue ribbon division. Um, all the marbles. And uh, yeah, look, it's, it's a piece of history. It's a, it's a legacy fight. Two unbeaten uh, world champions. Uh, very different stylistically, very different in personality too, Jim. And uh, it's something that, that should really stop traffic. This is, uh, this is what it's all about. Uh, the big heavyweight clashes. Uh, they talk about the 100 metres sprints at the Olympics or you know, the Premier League season finishing Sunday or these sort of big events. This is right up there. And, and in terms of boxing, I mean, I was there in Madison Square Garden when Lennox Lewis and Evander Holyfield fought to that very, very contentious draw in March 1999. Uh, the rematch, of course, in, in the November where Lennox won more comfortably and uh, and got the three titles then, the WBC, the WBA and the IBF. Well, let's add the WBO, let's add the Ring magazine, let's add the other treasure that Turkey Al-Sheikh and Dr. Rakan have provided. I think there's seven, eight belts are there and uh, yeah. one of them will be going back either to Britain or to, to the Ukraine. So, uh, And it's a pick and fight too, Jim. So uh, it's it's just brilliant. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you've covered boxing all over the world. And when we get to this late stage, Adam, it always seems there's a bit of mind games goes on. Uh, Team Music, are they at the mind games with the canvas complaint? I think they've been at the mind games all along. You've heard Alex and Aegis uh, prod and poke Tyson when the uh, <laughs> the eye was uh, was cut and, and, and what happened there. It was a cut in sparring that happened um, as these things do occasionally occur. Um, the February date was put off and, and they've been just trying to get under his skin slightly. We all know Tyson is the big talker, the, the personality, the circus act in many ways. And uh, Alexander is a clever guy. He's intelligent. He's funny. He's uh, he's got his own way and style of doing things. Uh, he likes to keep quite quiet, but as we've seen, the the team can uh, support him in different ways. We had the the awful, uh, ridiculous John Fury uh, headbutt altercation earlier in the week, and I think look, it's you you get this before a massive fight. You're going to get the back and forths. Um, ultimately, they have incredible respect for each other. Tyson Fury has whipped himself into the best shape he's been in in, in several years, maybe even too light, too much. We, we wait and see on that. And Alexander Usyk is, in my opinion, one of the greatest fighters I've ever seen live. I'll put him up there almost with a, a Floyd Mayweather. I think uh, Alexander is a, a wonderful, wonderful boxer. And, uh, you know, with 335 wins in the amateurs, 21 in the professionals, undisputed cruiserweight champion. The only question mark here is, is he big enough, really? Because he's good enough, but is he big enough? The big the big man normally beats the little man if they're on the same wavelength, if yeah, they're on the same yeah, style. Yeah. And, you know, if Tyson's at his very best, he should beat Alexander. But is he, is he at his very best? The Ngannou fight and the cut and everything else would, would sort of maybe suggest otherwise. So. Yeah. Simon, th th there is a train of thought that all the antics, not least John Fury's antics earlier in the week, has lost Fury a lot of support um, and that people are fed up with what they see when the Furies come to town because something like that is more than likely to happen. We talked about it the other mm. day. Is it largely forgotten about now and will it be forgotten about l l looking ahead post this fight? Should it be forgotten well, there about? Is a, there is an undercurrent. It's not just because of this week and John Fury's um, absurd behaviour. It's because there's been a litany of observations from Tyson. You can praise Tyson and he'll like you, and if you but if you criticise him, then he won't. And that can be said about lots of sports people. It's not unique to him. But there's been an inelegance and 
and uncouthness about his behaviour over the last 12 months, which I think in part um, has alienated him from certain sections of the fan base. There's always this division about who people like. Mm. You know, I have a row with Eddie Hearn. People that like me will think I had a row with Eddie Hearn and I won that conversation. People like Eddie Hearn will think that he did. It's about people's views on things. I wrote an article this week about Tyson Fury, the boxer and the individual. I want the boxers to win. The individual, I find a little bit distasteful at the moment. I think some of the things that he said, I think he's been ridiculous. I think somehow or another he's got a memo from the Saudis that he's the most important person in the world and he can come out with the most ridiculous things. Like, you know, I shouldn't have to queue at airports and I'm treated like royalty in Saudi and I've generated so much income for the UK economy, I should be treated differently. People react to you the way that you, that the way that you, the things that you put out. Yeah. I think he's a generational uh, a great in his era. I think he opened up the heavyweight division by beating Klitschko in his backyard. I think he came back and did a remarkable thing against Deontay Wilder. I think he's the best fighter around. But also on the flip side of that, and this is the div divisive part of the conversation, I think he should behave better. End of. Do you, Adam? I understand what Simon's saying. Um, I think Tyson has been uh, an enigma. Uh, all the way through, he's unpredictable, which is actually uh, one of the major attractions in him. Uh, he's always been a, a, a great fighter. Um, we, we've known that from, for a long time. He should probably have gone to the Olympics either for, for Britain or Ireland. Um, turning professional, yeah, the one little bump against John McDermott, which was a fight that he maybe just scraped away with. Um, that apart, what he did, as Simon said, in Germany uh, when we were there with him against Klitschko, yeah, he, he he does he does a brilliant job. He did also was absolutely incredible in the second Deontay Wilder fight. Uh, I thought it was one of the best performances on foreign soil ever from a British fighter. I thought he was unbelievable that night. Yeah, but yeah getting up from the knockdown in the first fight, the third fight. There's there's been some amazing moments, and and Simon's right. You've got to put him up there as a, a once in a generation fighter. Tyson Fury is a personality. Um, he's marmite, right? You either love him or don't. Uh, <laughs> and I think that many people really admired him for the way he came back. You know, when he was so overweight. I remember seeing him in Monaco and Eddie and I were over for a fight and, and he came, he was about 24, 25 stone and he said, I'm going to get back in the ring and I'm going to become world champion again. And I just didn't take it seriously. So he's been unbelievable with that. Uh, he's been a big advocate of mental health. Uh, he's come back from the floor and uh, there's a lot of good there, I think, with Tyson Fury. But I think also there's a lot of people around him. There's, there's the hoopla of everything. Um, he does feel the, the, the king out in, in Saudi and, um, you know, he does draw people in. In. So, yeah, he's, he's always going to be divisive. Um, but yeah. there's no question that he is one of the great fighters of, uh, of certainly our era and maybe of any era.